Birds are truly amazing animals that have captured the imagination and interests of humans since ancient times. Their diversity and beauty make them fascinating, and it is no wonder bird watching is a passion for people worldwide. Flight, a characteristic feature for most birds, defines their freedom and has inspired human machines and devices that help people defy our terrestrial confines. It is not the ability to fly alone that draws us to birds. While the flight of a hummingbird is extraordinary and different from that of a mallard, the physical designs of both birds are truly beautiful. To realize that the osprey can spot, catch, and carry a large fish are amazing feats is to understand this bird's magnificence. Some birds, like this young, black-crested titmouse, are relatively secretive, while others offer birders open viewing, like the yellow-crowned night heron, and the majestic great blue heron commonly seen along waterways. As we have encroached upon nature, some birds have actually followed us and embraced the changing scenery from wild to urban. Pigeons may be one of the best examples, but the great tailed grackle, Inca doves, and many others have followed our city lifestyles. And let's not forget about those birds, especially chickens and other poultry, which have been intimately tied to our traditions and lifestyles for so long. Still, it has historically been human nature that has driven us to tame the wild beasts like these free Quaker parrots and make them our pets. Our fascination often goes beyond just seeing birds in the wild. Sometimes this interest benefits our wild animals. Humans and nature come together when people try to help injured wildlife like this immature caracara and screech owl with the intent to release these birds back to the wild. However, in spending time with wild birds, we have come to learn that some species will imprint, socialize, or otherwise interact with people on a more pet-like basis. Naturally, we are drawn to the more colorful and charismatic species like this Amazon parrot. The sheer beauty and intelligence of parrots, of which many species are commonly kept as pets, make them irresistible to some and have sparked a worldwide trade. Parrots are naturally inquisitive, social, and long-lived, and have proven to be unique companion animals. These feathered family members share millions of homes with people worldwide and are likely to remain popular for years to come. With animal ownership comes responsibility. We have learned that these intelligent, social, and long-lived creatures are prone to behavior problems. It appears that like other intelligent animals, especially humans, birds need to be properly socialized and develop their natural skills. This young Congo African Grey Parrot has already begun feather picking but is still very inquisitive. In comparison, this juvenile, poorly socialized military macaw has subdued responses to any stimulus and is unfortunately at risk of future behavior problems. Compare this bird to an age-matched and well-socialized blue and gold macaw. The blue and gold macaw is interactive and keenly observant of his surroundings. This macaw has a great start in life and is clearly different in behavior from the previous two birds. However, behavior problems are complex and cannot be predicted based alone on a bird's youth experiences. Birds need to develop and utilize their natural skills. This holds true for both wild and captive birds. Of the three main waking activities most birds perform daily, including socialization, self-maintenance or grooming, and foraging, foraging occupies the bulk of time. Foraging is simply the act of searching for food and is a natural behavior employed by most animals. The availability of food, time of year, health status, environmental conditions, and other factors determine how much food a given animal will eat and subsequently how much time will be spent foraging. As would be expected, many captive animals have somewhat controlled environments with readily available food. In contrast to these wild animal examples, most captive animals spend very little time foraging. Birds are natural foragers and can be seen looking for food often throughout the day. The ability of a bird to survive to maturity, reproduce, and propagate its species depends on how successfully it can find food. This green heron is a solo hunter and tends to stalk individual prey. In contrast, the brown pelican can be found working in pairs, groups, and with mixed species when looking for food. The methods in which a bird forages not only determines how much food it will find, but also if it is safe from danger. For example, by foraging near livestock, the cattle egret easily finds insects frightened as cows walk and graze and is also offered some protection by its oversized field companions. 
These tightly packed nests of the cliff swallow closely correlate with the frenzied feeding habits of this highly social species as they are seen here foraging over open water. In fact, foraging tends to be a social event for many bird species like these black-chinned hummingbirds seen here at the nectar feeders and the turkey vultures circling overhead in a group looking for food. Not all birds are social foragers, especially the more predatory birds of prey like this osprey. The behavioral effects of captivity on wild animals can be devastating. When one behavior or activity is abolished, then the time is filled with another. For example, if a bird spends minimal time foraging, maybe because food is provided in a convenient bowl, its options are to spend the remaining waking time socializing, grooming, playing, or resting. Unfortunately, many captive parrots, especially those kept singly, also have limited socialization opportunities and spend their time vying for attention, excessively grooming, damaging their feathers, or sitting idly. Feather damaging behaviors are uncommon in free range chickens such as these and are usually only encountered when birds are kept in pens with little or no cage substrate. Studies in chickens kept in cages clearly show that without appropriate foraging material, feather pecking and other behavior problems are common. Similar conclusions have been made with parrot species and have helped spur numerous studies evaluating the role of natural behaviors in both prevention and management of behavioral abnormalities. The purpose of this video is to introduce foraging as a means to help birds occupy their time in a healthy and productive manner. As supported by clinical research and observation, foraging can also be used to reduce some abnormal behaviors such as feather destruction and repetitive functionalist activity as well as increase activity and improve the quality of life of these treasured companions. Foraging is not meant to provide a cure-all or guaranteed preventative to bird behavior problems as many factors contribute to abnormal behaviors. Also, do not begin this exercise if your bird is sick unless under direct supervision from your avian veterinarian. However, when properly provided, foraging opportunities can help pet, private collection, and zoo birds truly live in a captive setting. As foraging is simply the act of looking for food, the concept of a foraging tree was developed to provide a place for birds to find their next meal. Clinical experience has supported that pet birds tend to actively forage better away from than inside of their cage. The following examples are intended to give owners ideas on how to implement foraging with their beloved pet parrots. The foraging tree example can also be used with zoo and private collection parrots as well as other perching birds. In a home setting, the foraging tree should provide several feeding stations, at least five to seven per bird. These feeding stations are oriented such that the bird must navigate the tree to reach each site. Ideally, make the top branch no taller than eye level of the shortest person in the house, excluding small children. The lowest branch should be at least 18 inches or more off the ground to help keep the bird on the tree. As one would expect, some birds will need their wings trimmed to actually keep them on the tree until the bird is used to the idea that this is the place to eat. Each tree is customized to meet your space, time, and financial constraints with your bird's physical dimensions in mind. The more complex the tree, the more cost and cleanup incurred. It is better to have a tree that you can reasonably afford and take care of than one that is ignored or disliked. The first step is to place food openly in each feeding station. It is very important to place only a small amount of food in each station. Otherwise, your bird may sit at the top feeding station, fill up, and never bother to look further. Also, it helps if your bird is hungry. Try pulling all food several hours prior to placing your bird on the tree. Ultimately, your bird should spend most of its eating time foraging. Missy is a chronic feather-chewing umbrella cockatoo and serves as a perfect model for the foraging tree. While Missy easily navigates around now, she was very slow to start and even fearful when first placed on the tree. Now, Missy is a consummate forager and carefully contemplates her next meal. However, some birds start very slow and may take weeks to months to reach this comfort level. Once your bird can easily navigate the foraging tree and is readily eating here, hide the food by covering the feeding station using something light such as a piece of paper. 
Missy will demonstrate how this second step works. While wing flapping and gentle breezes can easily knock off the light covering, your bird needs to discover that even though the food is covered, it is still there. This transitional stage teaches your bird to look for food it cannot readily see. For some birds, this is easy. For others, such as Missy used to be, you may have to help your bird by only partially covering the food. Continue to place a small amount of food in each station. The third step involves covering the feeding station with something more substantial. Here, a piece of paper is wrapped around the feeding station and can no longer be easily knocked off. There are several ways to conduct this step, but all require your bird to put forth more effort to get to food. In this example, a favorite food item is placed inside a crumpled plain paper cone and the feeding station is then covered with paper secured with non-toxic tape. You may need to make an opening in the cover to help your bird figure this out. Again, Missy will demonstrate. Keep in mind that some birds have difficulty knowing to actively remove the cover and will need help. If your bird is having difficulty with step three, try the following tricks. First, place a favorite food item on top of the cover, which your bird can easily get. The next day, make a hole in the feeding station cover. Partially place the favorite food item through the hole such that your bird can still easily get the food. Each day, push the food item further through the hole until it is completely in the feeding station and under the perforated cover. Once a bird figures this out, they tend to learn to rip at the cover, as Missy is doing here, and check to see what awaits them. Once your bird is comfortably getting through the feeding station barrier, it is time for a change. During step four, place random quantities of food and foraging toys in the feeding stations. In other words, you may have no food in station one, a foraging toy in station two, a small amount of food in station three, and so on. Let's recap the main points discussed earlier. Provide a foraging area or tree away from the cage if possible. Have at least five to seven feeding stations per bird. Adjust the feeding stations such that your bird must at least work a little to reach each one. Keep the top branch below eye level of the shortest person in the house, excluding small children. Keep the lowest branch 18 or more inches off the ground. There are four steps to introducing your bird to the foraging tree. Step one, place a small amount of food openly in each feeding station. Step 2. Cover the feeding stations with something light, such as a piece of paper. Step 3. Cover the feeding stations with a more substantial barrier. Step 4. Place random quantities of food and foraging toys in the feeding stations. This next section will discuss the use of foraging toys. A foraging toy is one that simply requires some action to retrieve food, such as unraveling these peas wrapped in plain paper. Here, a food mix is placed within a plain paper cup and then crumpled. It is important to start with simple foraging toys as some birds are easily frustrated by complex devices. Blueberries are placed in a simple round wooden vessel. Your bird can take off the lid or knock it over to retrieve the food. Again, think about starting with easy toys. This foot toy is great in that the bird can see the food but still has to figure out how to get it out of the holes. This type of toy can be hung off the foraging tree, within a cage, or simply placed in a feeding station. One downside with this and other more complicated toys is that they take more time to load than the earlier examples. This small wooden vessel is great for small treats and is designed to be destroyed by your bird. Use natural products such as untreated paper and wood for destructible items. If your bird can destroy a toy with synthetic parts such as plastic, metal, rubber, etc., do not use them. Too many curious birds ingest parts of synthetic toys that result in medical problems. This bamboo toy is a little more advanced and requires increased dexterity from your bird. As such, this is an intermediate level toy and should be reserved until your bird has shown proficiency with more basic toys. Another intermediate level example includes this hanging toy. While this is fairly simple, it does require that your bird either pull the toy up or approach it from another perch. Of course, this toy would be easier for a larger bird compared to a cockatiel or similarly size-matched species. 
Some toys come in multiple sizes to best fit your bird's size and skill level. Remember, start easy so as not to frustrate your bird into quitting. Let's put Missy to the test. The first foraging toy is the treat wrapped in plain paper. Missy readily goes for the toy and spends time exploring it. This is in stark contrast to simply going to the feed trough and filling up and shows one of the main reasons to allow birds to forage, to occupy time performing a productive behavior. Next, the food filled paper cup is placed in the feeding station. Like a true foraging toy predator, Missy takes the bait. It is important to recognize that Missy has already become comfortable with navigating the tree and has learned to search each feeding station as their contents change daily. Missy was a slow learner and reaching this stage took several months. Other better socialized and adjusted birds may breeze through these steps. The same is done with the two wooden vessels shown earlier. For filming purposes, the feeding station is not covered but can be for your bird. As you can see, Missy carefully studies her next toy and potential meal. Don't forget to leave some feeding stations and toys empty. Consummate foragers need a challenge. For her next trick, Missy will perform on the foot toy. The interesting aspect of this toy is that most birds tend to slowly empty the food piecemeal through the holes rather than pop off the top and get the treats all at once. For this reason, foot toys are good to keep in a bird's cage when owners are gone for long periods of time. These toys tend to keep hungry birds preoccupied. The intermediate level bamboo foraging toy presents a challenge for Missy. While Missy has recognized that these toys usually have food in them, she has trouble figuring out how to even hold this one and get the prize inside. Some birds will easily become frustrated if they cannot quickly get into the toy. However, with much experience, Missy perseveres and insists that something good is inside. If your bird seems too frustrated, offer a helping hand. The top of this bamboo toy was loosened such that when Missy grabbed it, it easily came off this time. Now Missy carefully searches the top for any food. After realizing the top has no food, Missy drops it and goes for the second half of the toy, only she accidentally throws it out of the bowl. Again, intervention is required and the bottom half of the toy is placed back in the foraging station. Missy has not quite figured out how this works, but at least she is trying. When your bird is exploring a new toy, you too may have to intervene and help. Missy tries comically and unsuccessfully to reach inside the toy with her mouth. The food is still at the bottom and just out of reach. In the process of her fumbling, she spills the food into the foraging station. After realizing her success, Missy tosses the bottom half of the bamboo toy and claims her prize. Victory at last. Some additional basic to intermediate foraging toys will be demonstrated here. A simple and effective idea is to fill a foraging station with untreated wood beads. This is a great method for hiding non-perishable foods such as nuts and seeds. In fact, you can keep a feeding station filled with the wood beads and use it to randomly hide food items. This will help keep your bird guessing and routinely searching the foraging stations. You may even try more creative ideas. An almond in the shell is placed in this plain paper bag and folded. Next, food items are sprinkled in this plain paper and then all is wadded into a ball. The wadded ball is added to the paper bag with the almond and subsequently twisted close. In this example, an untreated leather rope is tied around the bag so that this toy can be hung from the foraging tree or within the cage. Holes are poked in the bag to help give your bird something to tear into. Cotton rope embellishments are added and the toy is ready for your bird. Time to recap the basics of foraging toys. Foraging toys require some action for your bird to retrieve food. Start with simple toys and increase based on your bird's progress. Use untreated natural components such as paper and wood for destructible toys. Use well-constructed synthetic components for non-destructible toys. 
When increasing toy complexity, help your bird as needed, as some birds are easily frustrated. To step up the pace, we will now discuss more complex toys for the advanced forager. Once your bird has shown proficiency with the basic toys, it is time to present a challenge. The cone toy requires your bird to unscrew a wing nut, open it, and retrieve the food. This next toy is more advanced and requires skill on multiple levels for your bird. This is a hanging toy with a wing nut and protective durable plastic covering and should be reserved for more advanced foragers. As we explore advanced toy examples, you will notice that more time is required to fill each one with food. Subsequently, the more advanced the toy, the more participation required from you, the bird owner. Another advanced toy is shown and represents increased complexity with the added difficulty of untying knots. Finally, we reach the most complicated foraging toy in this series. In fact, this one tends to confuse most people. The added durable components are all intended to increase a bird's time to reach the food item. Birds that work with intermediate to advanced foraging toys generally seem to enjoy working for their meal. In fact, most foraging studies in multiple bird species clearly show that birds tend to want to forage for a meal rather than get it straight from a cup or other feeding station. Missy is a prime example of a former bowl eater turned forager. While the toy here represents the current extent of Missy's abilities, she readily forages through various toys rather than eat from an open bowl, even when favorite food items are offered. Missy was once a bird that took months to adjust to the tree and begin any foraging activity. This next section shows how Missy uses hanging foraging toys. Many naive birds seem to learn this skill with no help. This leather rope has one shelled pecan at the end which Missy must open to get to the nut meat. A hanging 1 by 4 inch untreated soft pine wood plank has holes drilled that contain various dry food items and is one of Missy's favorite toys. Often she will inspect the wood, pull out one preferred food item and drop the wood plank to be retrieved later. By adding more toys and feeding stations, the foraging tree becomes more complex and creates opportunities for mistakes. Missy is spying one of her favorite foods, an almond. This one just happens to be stuck in a hanging bamboo foraging toy. Like a trained huntress, Missy goes for the hanging toy, but in the excitement she grabs the wrong leather rope and pulls up something she did not quite expect. While Missy may not have been the first in her class, she at least realizes that what is in her foot is not what she wants. She carefully studies the wood block in her foot and the intended prey on a different rope and comes to the conclusion that something went wrong. In effort to rectify the situation, Missy takes a different course and correctly brings up the prize. Remember to mix it up a little. As seen here, sometimes Missy comes up with nothing as some foraging toys and feeding stations are empty. Even though she had a slow start, Missy is truly queen of her jungle, or at least her foraging jungle gym. The following points should be considered. Only use advanced toys with experienced birds, otherwise your bird may lose interest and become frustrated. Consider homemade, safely constructed foraging toys. With experienced foragers, keep the location of hidden food unpredictable. Foraging toys can also be used in a cage, especially when a tree or area is not available or you must leave your bird for long periods of time. This toy is designed such that you load a lot of food that your bird will have to work hard for. As such, it makes a good single item foraging toy. Another example includes these cups with a durable plastic top secured by wing nuts. These intermediate level forging toys can be scattered around and within your bird's cage. Ronan is a master forger and demonstrates the use of the first mentioned toy. 
While this hanging foraging toy can hold a lot of food, Ronin can only retrieve small pieces at a time. This is similar to the smaller foot toys discussed earlier. However, a full day's worth of food can be hidden in this larger toy and tends to keep birds busy for long periods of time. Even though Ronan has seen how the food is loaded, he, like most other birds, chooses to pick small pieces of food out through the holes, again making this a great time-occupying foraging toy. Missy has decided that this toy is also good on the foraging tree. In fact, she will spend several minutes with this toy working to take a small piece of the same food that is more easily obtainable from other locations. Now Ronan tries his beak on a forging cup within his cage. Ronan's housemate Delphi, a Patagonian conure, shows off her skill with the same toy. Birds that learn to forage tend to prefer this method of eating over traditional bowl feeding. For instance, Ronan will traverse his cage for the idea that some food might be hidden in a wadded paper cup. Whether or not there is any food present is up to you. He will even go after difficult to reach foraging toys seemingly just for the adventure. Once he reaches the wadded paper cup, Ronan fails to notice the almond drop and continues to playfully chew. Of course, watching birds behave and interact normally is part of what attracts us to these beautiful animals. Birds such as this sandwich tern surround our world and display a multitude of physical characteristics, songs, and behaviors. Most birds divide their day into distinct activities or behaviors. These great egrets are resting in a social group. When not socializing, a bird may preen itself or perform other self-maintenance activities. This may occur in a social group or individually as seen with this Inca dove. Preening happens to be the one behavior that is rarely restricted by captivity. As a result, caged birds can occupy a significant portion of their time grooming, which may be excessive to the point of damaging feathers if other natural behaviors are restricted. Sleeping or resting is of course also a natural part of a bird's day. These common grackles are roosting for the night on power lines in a nearby tree. If a bird has limited socialization or foraging opportunities, as is common when caged, it may choose to sit idly or rest during significant portions of the day. Of course, some daytime resting, as demonstrated by this mallard duck, is normal. While it is clear that most wild birds, such as this black-capped chickadee, spend a significant amount of their time foraging, this is perhaps the most severely restricted behavior for captive birds. Foraging can be a social event or done singly. Regardless, most studied wild birds, including commonly kept parrot species, spend at least 50% of their day foraging. While Missy, who was featured earlier, is a prime example of a cockatoo with chronic feather damaging behavior, it is important to note that these abnormal behaviors can be seen in many caged birds and not just parrots. This chicken has been cooped without access to a yard or adequate foraging substrates and began pulling her feathers leading to a large bare patch over her back. Even birds of prey, such as this captive red-tailed hawk, may abnormally pull feathers when stressed and improperly caged. When reviewing this video, it is important to understand that abnormal behaviors, such as feather damaging in captive birds, have multiple potential causes. This sulfur-crested cockatoo is a happy bird with an excellent diet, foraging opportunities, and environment conducive to well-being. When possible, work with your avian veterinarian to establish and improve upon your bird's health. So if your bird spends most of its day sitting around, excessively preening, or is just plain bored, consider giving your feathered pet something to run to, food. Only make it challenging and make it something your bird can spend time working on. Remember that some birds are slow to work for their meals. However, once they figure it out, most birds get hooked on foraging. Let Missy be your guide and example. 
While Missy will probably never be completely normal, she has made tremendous advances and her overall behavior improved largely due to daily foraging. This is Dr. Scott Eccles. Thank you for taking the time to meet Missy and learn about foraging.